Hi, my name is Jane, and today we'll be looking at the first part developing a data visualization style guide. So I've always had an interest in developing these guides, um, and I thought maybe I could approach it as a personal project to learn more about them. Um, and I decided to try to find a company or brand that hasn't made these yet, and I'm going to try to make it for them. So it's more of like a make-believe. So the first thing I'm going to try to figure out is why bother? Why bother making these in the first place? So um, typically, a lot of brands, they usually have some sort of design system in place um, as a guideline. So, for example, if you look at Uber, they have a co very comprehensive guideline, uh, and it's a web interface. So they outline various aspects of their brand, logo, color, brand architecture, and so on. And generally, what, they're, what they are able to achieve um, through those guidelines is a cohesive, consistent identity throughout. So brands are essentially identities that... Um, they're like people, right? As a person, you have a personality that's relatively stable, it's predictable, and um, you know, your friends, they know what will make you happy. They know what will make you upset. And they know that because you're a predictable person. You have things about you, you have habits that's very consistent, it doesn't change. Um, you know, especially if we're looking at you know, adulthood, our personality remains relatively stable, it doesn't change that much. And so, same thing with brands. Um, there are essentially just identities, and the, to have an identity, you have to have something that's consistent and coherent. Um, but the challenge with brands that you know represent organizations is that so many people have has access to that. So when many people are trying to create things for this particular brand, um, it's important that there's something that's guiding that process, so it feels like it's one coherent and co consistent voice, and that's really important. When it comes to data visualization. Oftentimes, that is a, there's a void for that, and um, a lot of times when we think about color, they're not made to be optimized to show data. Sometimes they're maybe optimized to show for aesthetics or maybe to show certain aspects of a brand, but they don't take into consideration effectively communicating data. And that's where the data visualization style guides come into play. And so when I was looking through um, brands to select, um, I had three key things that are important to me. So um, the first was that the brand itself um, value good sign. So if I was going to make a, a data visualization style guide, a make-believe data visualization style guide for this brand, they had value design. They had to understand why it was important to have it in the first place. Um, and so I based this on looking at their website, looking at the products, and seeing if, if they actually had you know, put a lot of thought into it, what they made. Um, if you had a good design team behind it. The second aspect was um, they had detailed branding guidelines. So this is important for me because data visualization, uh, data visualization style guides, they don't exist um, like separately as separate entities. They're usually embedded with an over, um, overarching branding guideline, and that's a lot more broad. So it was important to me that this exists already so I could use that to guide what I was making and to make sure that it was integrated nicely into what was already existing. And finally, it was important to have existing applications of data visualization because, because this is a personal project, I wouldn't know how they're using the data unless I saw them actually you know, make something to, um, displaying it. And so it's important that there's, there are things that are available publicly that I can see um, and understand how they apply data visualization. So I, I looked through many more brands than this, but this is just you know, a short form of what I did look at. Um, and these are all the brands that I started off thinking, okay, they all value design. Um, they understand it, and they understand the, the value of good design. Um, of these eight brands, um, only two um, had a branding guideline that was comprehensive enough for internal use, um, Uber and Slack. And uh, Slack was the only one that I could find data visualization applications. Uh, I couldn't find anything for Uber. So for Slack, I found like you know reports, I found a dashboard, I found blog posts. So I found things where they apply data visualization. I can actually have some idea of how they actually use it. And so this is Slack's uh, branded guidelines. It is a PDF document. So unlike Uber, which was a web interface, this is a PDF document. And um, I think it was like 40 to 30, 40 pages. Um, it's, and it's very straightforward um, guidelines. So they had about like you know one page per idea. For example, here they have like logo, color use. Um, they had uh, different applications on like voice and tone, brand values. So it's very simple and very concise, and um, it's just one document. So whatever I would make, it would have to integrate within this, and it wouldn't need, it wouldn't take up a big section. It would probably take at least one to two pages, probably two at most, um, in terms of um, how to 
visualize data. So that's it for this part. Um, in the next part, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about um, some of the applications I found for Slack and understanding um, them a bit better and how we could probably improve upon them. So that's it for now. Thanks so much for uh, watching and I'll see you the next one.